Okay, so all of these things, let's just continue on through this stuff. No, more monoterpenes. Look at all these. Antimicrobial, antifungal, okay, tranquilizers, Valium, or Valerian. These are all come from, produced by these plants. We get into these different types of, we have mites and insecticides. Now, when plants produce these compounds, this is their chemical arsenary. Plants can make all of these different compounds to defend themselves against pest, pathogens, and things that want to eat them. Plants change their chemistry. If they have the raw materials, the resources, to activate the enzymes to produce all of these compounds. The, the intelligence is already there. Let's go down through some more. We get into our sesquiterpenes, down through here. Potent, a very potent antibiotic, antifungal. Okay, deters insects feeding in plants. Okay, we come on down here, attracts nematodes, right here. Attacks, brings in, then it will attack the larva. Anti-inflammatory, antispasmatic. Fungal infections, it stops those. When we look at these guys, these, this is our gibberellin, this is, this is a, uh, one of the five uh, plant hormones. Uh, your phytoalexin groups, we're going to get into that. Your plants, this is where the plant produces this chemistry arsenal to stop disease infection. Okay? We have, let's just finish up here. This, this resists, stops cardiovascular disease, inflammation. Okay, stevia, your sweeteners. How many of you guys ever tasted that stuff? Okay, they use it in all kinds of things. They got rid of aspirate, where they're reducing aspartame and those other things. Stevia is a natural plant product. It's a sweetener. Okay, gibberellin, stem elongation, st stem growth, seed germination, fruit set. Did we ever talk about that? Okay, now we're starting to come back and look at the terpenes, right here, these diterpenes that are affecting our stem elongation in our wheat, our seed germination, our fruit set and growth. Okay, these plant secondary metabolites are driving all of these functions and doing all this stuff. Our tetraterpenes, right here, anti-inflammatory, anti-arthritic, okay, anti-tumor. We come on down, inhibits cancer. So, if all of this stuff is in our food, why are we so sick? Not enough in it. There's not enough in our food. Because we don't have the minerals making and activating, activating the plant's enzymes to put this together. It's not that plants don't know how to do this, it's that we haven't got this, we haven't got the resources to them. Then we, go, we come down through here, Okay, protect skin, antioxidants, anti-inflammatory. You can go on and on, and believe me, I can go on and on and on. I can go on more than you want me to go on. Yes, sir? When you're talking plants, what kind of plants are you talking about? There are hundred different millions of plants. There are. And plants, all plants have the ability to produce proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and oils. Your plant primary metabolites. Plants will also produce this. Some more than others. Like your terpenes will have way higher oil contents, okay? Your vegetables, like your kale, your cabbages, your broccoli, those things, those are in a different family and they produce not so much those compounds, but they produce the anti-cancer, anti-tumor, anti-disease uh, type. They produce another spectrum of nutrition that stops other problems. So it isn't that we can eat one plant and get all this is we have to eat a variety of plants. That's why if you live on McDonald's hamburgers, you can't get all of these different plants. You don't get the kale and the, and the cauliflower, and you don't get the broccoli, and we don't pick up these nutri nutrients that these specific plants make. There's a whole bunch of research done on all these compounds that these different plants put together. And when I have another 100 years, I'll get that put together. I mean, this stuff gets really complicated pretty quick. But it's all there if we have time to go look at it. Now, the cool thing is, is when we start looking up at his, this is our yellow pigments, astaxanthin. 
that is the most powerful antioxidant that we have on the planet. It will detox better than any other antioxidant. And a lot of it's produced from algae. Okay? Plants also produce this. Okay? And I want to get into, in, into these again. You look at all these things that they stop. Okay? Where they're found, where they're coming from, what they're doing. They all have these benefits. Your, your cell strength. Okay? This is your phenolics. Okay, uh, strengthening in your walls, your capillaries, your vitamin C production. Okay, this is where you pick up your reds, your purples. Leonard, do you ever grow any plants that are red and purple and blue? Okay, this is where it's coming from. There are your phenolics. Okay, it's not an accident about any of this stuff. Okay, willow birch, tree, potent anti-inflammatory, antiseptic. Salicylic acid, those are your aspirin, it comes from here. Now, right here, you have over 30 plant families that produce these phytoalexins, and these are the guys that go attack viruses, bacteria, fungi, and insects. This is where your phytoalexins, your plant's chemistry. Okay, they're all part of your plant's secondary metabolites that require lots of trace minerals to activate the enzymes to utilize your NPK carbon, hydrogen, oxygen to make this stuff. Okay, plants are brilliant. Why is a human body so similar to ground? We're made out of the same thing. Who did it? God. Okay, lignin. Oh, do you guys had wheat layover? Is it because you got such gigantic heads on there? Now, I've had guys tell me, say, <coughs> my wheat head's so big, plants can't hold them up. And I said, partner, the answer really is you have no copper and you have no manganese because it runs the polyphenol oxidase that builds your stock strength in your stem. Oh, that sounds a little complicated. Well, that's the reality is it's another mineral deficiency. It's not that I got too big a stock, I got too big a heads, I don't have the stock strength. Because the two minerals that run that enzyme that builds my stock strength together, they're not there in high enough quantities to build a strong stock. If I get my copper and my manganese up, your wheat won't go down. I don't care if you have 200 kernels in the head. It ain't going down, okay? And so you, you look at all of these different things that come into play here. This, is, this part of plants are just literally brilliant, okay? And so acetic acid, propionic acid, butyric acid, volatile fatty acids. How many of you guys are livestock feeders here? Okay, Marty, you are, okay? When we go into livestock feeding, okay, you have three dominant acids in your rumen. Acetic acid, propionic acid, well, well, let's do it, acetate, propionate, and butyric, okay? And you have to have them in certain compounds. This is where they're made, guys, right here, okay? And if I don't grow my plant right, I don't get the balance of my volatile fatty acids into my rumen, which means my cow isn't going to work right, and he's going to be sick, and he's not going to digest well, and I can't put on meat, then I can't buy my wife that Cadillac, and then we are not going to Hawaii. This becomes a major problem right here, okay? So even with hollow stem wheat, um, I mean, do they take that out, breed it out so that it's, will that hold it up? Yes, and stems are not meant to be hollow. We shouldn't have hollow stem plants. That is a calcium deficiency. It is a phosphate deficiency. How many of you guys have eaten a strawberry with a white core? Potassium deficiency, okay? It's, it's, we're not supposed to have, and then there's usually a little hollow part in there, in your strawberry, and they last about a day or two when you get them home because there's no nutrition in them. We're gonna talk about that, is we lose the ability to put that plant together right and so the compounds don't happen. 
So what we eat is some nutrient deficient stuff that's going to spoil. One thing before we have lunch, which is really, really important, is if you, and this is for you gardeners, or are you all of us guys that grow crops, if you grow a plant and it spoils, it is nutrient deficient. They are not designed to spoil. Period. So if your tomatoes can't be picked and set on the counter at room temperature for one year until they fully dehydrate without spoiling, you have not put everything in it that that plant is capable of doing. I did this in 2007. It took me three years to get my tomato plants to do this. Okay? So, but I picked my tomatoes September 25th and we put them on the counter. And we let them dry. And we photographed them every month or two, all the way. August 2000 and 2008. <coughs> I still have them in a bag and they're stable and they did not spoil. You can do it with apples, squash, potatoes, oranges. tomatoes, oranges, oranges. And when you get the nutrient content up, it will dehydrate, it can wilt, but it doesn't break down and spoil. Okay? And so food is designed to have that potential but it has to have the nutritional components. The enzymes have to be stable and everything has to be there. Because we're gonna talk about insects when we come back here, okay? Insects are some of God's most precious little creatures. Okay, now they torment us because they come in and they make our life miserable. But God uses insects to take out unhealthy plants. Now that sounds really harsh because that's not what we want to hear. 